Welcome back to another episode of Cable Chatter. It's good to be back. It's been a busy time here in the studio and here at the school, and so there's been a bit of a break, but we're back. And I have with me today Bill Corbin, who will be representing the Union City Alumni Foundation and the Union City Alumni Association. And there's a lot of things that the association has been up to in the last couple of years, and I'm excited to bring you more information. But first, we've got a lot of community announcements. There's a lot of things going on in May, and we're going to even get into June a little bit, I think. It's starting to be summer outside. The weather's turning around. People want to be outside, so there's just a lot going on. On Friday, May 6th, the first Friday concert will be at 7 p.m., and that will be the George Street Connection. They'll be playing 60s and 70s oldies. This will be the Farmland Community, Community Center. There will be a meal option at an, added, at an added cost. Call for details, and that number is 765-468-7631, or visit the Historic Farmland USA Facebook page. First Friday for Union City is sponsored by the Preservation Society. This will be at the fire department on the Indiana side. That's 201 South Howard Street. This will be from 515 to 7 p.m. On Saturday, May 7th, the Spring Vendor and Craft Market will be at the County Fairgrounds. That's US 27 South Winchester from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Call 765-509-0155 for details. The Circle X Fun Horse Show will be taking place at the Circle X Ranch, and that's 818 West 250 North, Winchester. This begins at 10 a.m. For more details, call 260-729-2326. The Big Ruthie Tenderloin Sandwich Scholarship fund Fundraiser, brought to you by Phi Delta Kappa Club, will be occurring. That's at 825 North Residence Street, Winchester. That's from 4 to 7 that night. Call 954-536-6059 for more details. And the beginning of a neat series on Wednesday, May 11th, the Grass to Garden Community Gardening Series, and this is the first of four sessions, will be taking place at the County Fairgrounds in Winchester. That's 6 to 8 p.m. Call 765 584-2271 for more details. May 12th through 14th, that's Thursday through Saturday, the Winchester Library will be having a book sale. That's 125 Northeast Street. Call 765-584-4824 for more details. On Tuesday, May 17th, the Wall That Heals Escort will be leaving Muncie at 3 p.m. This will be traveling to the Winchester Community High School. It's going to be a really neat event, and we at the Winchester Community High School most of the rest of that week. Call 765-546-8630. Wednesday, May 18th will be the second in the Grass to Garden series about community gardening. That's at Community Fairgrounds from 6 to 8 p.m., and that will be every Wednesday. Thursday through Sunday, May 19th through 22nd, The Wall That Heals will be open to the public at the Winchester Community High School. It's open 24 hours a day, opening Thursday at 6 p.m. to Sunday at 2 p.m. Call 765-546-8630 for more details. On Saturday, May 21st, there will be a benefit car and vendor event. This will go to the Jeremy Lee Morrison family. This will be at the Farmland Lions Club. That's 301 West Walnut Street. This will be 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Call 765-546-8500 for further details. The Goodrich Park Summer Concert Series will be kicking off with the Winchester Community High School Jazz Band. That's 7 to 9 p.m. Go ahead and check out the Facebook page, at Music in the Goodrich Park. Tuesday, May 24th. Jolly Green Cleaning Make and Take Workshop will be taking place, sponsored by the Randolph County Recycling District. This will be at the Community Fairgrounds. Call 765-584-2271 for more details. That Wednesday, May 25th, will be the third session of the Grass to, Gardening, the Grass to Garden Community Gardening Event at the Fairgrounds from 6 to 8 p.m. On Saturday, May 28th, Wix Pies and Cool Rides 
car show and pie eating contest will be in downtown Winchester from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Call 260-273-1447 for more information. That same day, the Artisan Park Summer Concert Series will be featuring the Little Ginger Band. Again, this will be at Artisan Park in Union City from 7 to 10 p.m. That is all I have for the community announcements. There's a lot going on, and I'm sure the summer is going to be jam-packed. So go ahead and get out there and enjoy Randolph County's community events. There's just a lot. And stay tuned to Facebook pages all over the county for more information and as things change with the weather that is unpredictable in this type of season. Again, I'm coming, going to be bringing you Bill Corbin with the Union City Alumni Association. There's a lot of stuff that's going on here in Union City and in Randolph County. Thank you. Welcome back to another episode of Cable Chatter. I'm here with Bill Corbin. Bill, Bill Corbin is the Alumni Association President. Um, and he's, uh, he's led a pretty interesting life, uh, and he's come back around to the Union City area to kind of help us out to take a big part of the Alumni Association, and has been very active uh, last handful of years in our community, alumni, and everything else. And so I wanted to bring him on to tell us about what the Alumni Association is doing and how those different bits and pieces have been involved in our community and still are and have some really strong vision for uh, moving forward. And it, it's been exciting myself to get a chance to know him in the last couple of years. And uh, so I wanted to bring him on and uh, give you guys a chance to uh, meet him as well. Bill, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm Union City, class of 1962, <laughs> so many moons ago, uh, and, and as was fairly common then, I, I uh, set off to go to college and with kind of some assumption that I'd not be back too much in Union City. Uh, I, I went to GM Institute for an undergrad degree, which is now Kettering University. Uh, had the good fortune, unlikely as it was, to wind up at the Harvard, to get to, get to the Harvard Business School for an MBA. Uh, that was associated with General Motors programming, so I, I uh, returned from that experience to uh, uh, work for General Motors uh, at the Frigidaire Division down in Dayton. <clears throat> and that turned out not well. G actually, GM, uh, I wanted to be in the car business anyway. They told me I was going to be in the appliance business if they told me, <laughs> <laughs> if they said I was. So we had a little difference of view about that. <clears throat> but, uh, but anyway, I'd, I'd Frigidaire wound up being sold, and so I had moved to RCA in Indianapolis, where I've spent my career. And, uh, uh, and probably the simplest explanation would be it, it's been an entrepreneurial experience. I'm a dedicated entrepreneur. I have something like 20 startups. Uh, a few of them worked well and a few <laughs> and a couple of them worked spectacularly badly. Well, I think that's, so the, that's the nature of startups. Yeah, you gotta you gotta take a little bit of a risk, and these things. Happen. Well, I've said that. You know, if you if you want to be a Kwana speaker someday, you have, and you're an entrepreneur, you have to have had your ritual failures. So, <laughs> so I had mine, and uh, and then I when things got going well, I was in various parts of communication, printing, uh, publishing, direct mail, that kind of thing. And uh, so I became just a lover of the wor of written words and thoughts and all. So, so I uh, wrote some books. Didn't sell many, but wrote some books. But, hey, <laughs> but anyway, that's the, uh, so that uh, that was most of my career. I did start it. If I have any claim to business fame, it would be that I invented Unified Neighbors which was one of the early, it might have been the earliest version of the idea of, of consumers combining their uh, reports and then somebody compiling it into a, a referral system. Uh, we didn't have the internet yet, so we had to do it all by collecting phone, uh, phone conversations uh, or phone, phone reports. <laughs> but that, uh, called Unified Neighbors, turned out to become Angie's List. Uh, which went on to be a publicly held company and all. It still exists as Angie. 
So the, that was a good one. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, so I became an entrepreneur, still am in effect at this point in life. But the uh, but the opportunity to or the the love of ideas and words and and communication uh, got me into a variety of nonprofit uh, activities in in Indianapolis. And then when I had the chance, was asked to consider coming to Union City on the alumni board, which was 14, 13, maybe some, most of 10 years ago. Uh, that evolved into using that capability, and here I am. Yeah, because the, uh, the Alumni Association has been, has been doing a lot of things in the last handful of years. I know uh, Jan Passmore was heavily involved and before, I think he was the president before <laughs> you and, and did some work there, but that's a, that's, a pretty, uh, that's a pretty impressive list of accomplishments. I mean, we all have our ups and downs in the road, but that sound, it sounds like you did very well, and that's just something to very much be proud of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm always willing to talk to people who uh, think they want to be an entrepreneur because it's a um, it's a mixed blessing. I mean, you have to have a temperament for it. You have to have a wife who will take the ride for you. She has to be willing to have you at the worst of it. We actually sold a house in order to pay bills that I'd run up on a business. So it, it was pretty bad. Um, yeah. I'm so my story is up and down, and probably almost anybody who takes that journey will experience some of that. So I always am willing to talk to people about whether they really uh, are cut out for it because it sounds good on my own business, be my own boss and all that, but it's uh, <clears throat> not always. But anyway, it's, it's been good. Well, and outside the alumni, I know you that that topic is something that you you work with you work with businesses and you have conversations about um, you know just uh, soft skills and working and communicating. I know that's that's a big piece of uh, or this piece of what you've been doing with with Vision Corner right. as exactly. well, um, and that's exciting. But we're, we're going to talk about the alumni association. So you've been you've been with the alumni for almost <laughs> ten years. Um, so tell us tell us about the alumni association. Uh, I was recruited by Jan Passmore, who you mentioned. Jan and I knew each other in Indianapolis. In fact, we, we uh, worked together on a book he wrote and published. It was called um, A Heartbeat Away, about the vice presidents. So I knew Jan when he called. It wasn't, I didn't know him well. He's uh, three or four years ahead of me in school, or before me. But he, his invitation was to come back and join the alumni board. And the situation there was that the longtime uh, owner, manager, whatever you want to call it, the, the, the major domo of the Alumni Association had passed away. There was no um, uh, plan for, organ or for um, uh, transfer of power. Sure. The system wasn't set up very well for anybody but her to run it. So the idea was uh, uh, that we would that we would come. Tom Wright actually was the first of us. Marv Kegris was the inspira uh, inspiration for the whole thing. That the idea we needed to uh, infuse new life, and so uh, so that got the group of us started. Uh, but but my job quickly evolved to community. It uh, became communications, like it seems to most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and so we started a variety of communication with the alumni, mostly newsletters that hadn't been done before. But part of the part of the situation there was just that we we were. Uh, I think the association claimed to be something like 140 years old. And at that point in our in our service capability, we were giving four or five scholarships uh, to four or five kids a year, and essentially that was it. So from fairly early, I said we're working too hard here to not be making more impact. And sure. so my my restless entrepreneurial spirit says, if if we could raise some additional funding, then we could do some additional things. And um, and this and this that part of what, what happened was all was all on Jan's watch as president. I was vice president, <coughs> and um, so anyway, so we the uh, fundraising did pick up and started to do some. Uh, they just increased the uh, resources, 
And, and then we went looking for a thing to do with the resources that would add new um, energy. And my sister, uh, Kathy, class of 65, had gone through the entire educational process from teaching fourth grade to superintendent of Brownsburg schools in, uh, near Indianapolis. So in their school, they had put together a teacher grant program that she says is really just a great use of funds that with re relatively little amount of money, you can impact projects for teachers and, and, and uh, through time that'll accumulate. So we, so we adopted the teacher grant program and originally just, uh, I think originally just a few hundred dollars. It was very modest first, first uh, uh, outing. Um, I think we had four grants that we gave and it was just very fledgling program. <clears throat> but uh, last year we had 23, I think 22 or three teachers that we helped uh, to the tune of 15,000 or so dollars, which would be a, a big increase obviously from where sure. we started. <clears throat> but what, what also happened when we did the teacher grant program, it, it changes, it changed the thinking about who we were. Because in, in, when you're essentially uh, the banquet provider, great event, important event coming up, everybody who and we'll, yeah, we'll, can, get, we'll yeah, definitely we'll, talk we'll, about yeah, that, I know it's up. coming. But, uh, but when we, when, um, when that, that and a few scholarships that essentially were given out at the banquet, so we had our own little side scholarship program that uh, wasn't essentially wasn't even involved with uh, the awards night, just a little thing we were doing. And so when that was the limit of our scope, it was limited scope. Sure. When when we began doing the teacher grant program, what that says is we're we're now actively helping education. You had no scholarships go out with the kids, and that's a great thing, and we want to help the kids. But teacher grants is, is money, or is money, that is invested inside the building. Sure. And uh, just it, one thing I remember from the very first year, we had, we had a uh, teacher grant request for a, a soil testing kit for the 4-H, or, or the uh, agricultural uh, program. And the one that we were replacing was something like 18 years old or something, and it, and basically didn't work anymore. <laughs> but it was just one of those things that never made budget. You know, it just went on year after year. Sure. So the teacher grant idea was that we could support programs that would not otherwise have been approved uh, in normal budgets. And and then when we talked to the teacher about that, I said, how how long will this last? He says, well, 10 years-ish, but, but not 18. And, and so, uh, so I do, did the math, or I don't know, 20 kids, 15 kids, whatever it was, times eight or 10 years, we're touching 150 students and teaching them an important thing. And that is some pretty serious leverage of the dollars. Yeah. So the whole idea that we could help uh, it, the, the with that kind of impact was 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 a good thing, but the other thing it did well, and and the teacher uh, the the teacher appreciation side, yeah, I think it's got a morale side that teachers can have ideas and have them funded, and so that was positive, but it also energized fundraising because it it's uh, when you when you start talking to alumni about their favorite teacher say. Yeah, that's a that's a great topic. Everyone has one, and so the idea that we were more closely connecting the alumni to the teacher core uh, was new, also. But anyway, that all went together to, I'd say, move us in the direction that we've uh, come since. Well, I can say, you know, for for myself, uh, teaching, and and my wife is also a teacher, and we both uh, both benefited multiple times from the, the teacher grant. And so we're, you know, my wife uh, works uh, specifically on reading in the elementary school. And so that's provided books and materials and technology to kind of help her do her job. And I think it, it takes some of the, it takes some of the, the risk away. Teachers have the, um, they can try something. 
you know, and it and mm -hmm. sometimes it it, <laughs> it blossoms and it just grows and and occasionally it's like, well, that was we tried something and 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 we we at least we tried. And I know, you know, we've done three D printing, mm -hmm. we've done resin printing in my program, electronics, and without the alumni association, without um, those grants it would have been very difficult for my kids to experience working on small uh, computers and electronics and things. So I know mm -hmm. myself and for my wife, we appreciate what the Alumni Association has done as far as that goes. <laughs> that, a, a picture that we have, it just blows me away it, as a senior now. <clears throat> the, the picture is of five or six, I think they're first graders, and they are on the, uh, working on the floor with these little r robots and their iPads. Mm -hmm. So we're talking first grade kids who are learning, who have learned to program a robot on an iPad. And uh, just thinking about what that represents in terms of technology and how comfortable they will be going forward with technology, you know, it's just, you know, it's a good thing. So the, the we, from the very start, we made that program K-12 instead of, uh, say, uh, high school, for example. And, and that's been rewarding just in that sense. We've, we've got reports from every single age about uh, cool things they've done. Absolutely. And, you know, I know when I talk to teachers about the stuff that they want to do, they, that's, that comes up very quickly is maybe I can do an alumni association grant. And, and, and I talk to them about what, what it is that they're looking <laughs> for. And it's like, well, is, that, is that the thing you want to do? Or is, does it look like this? And so we have conversations about, you know, what kind of neat things they can try for or experiences. And so it's, it's, it's amazing the doors that, I, that the, those opened. And like I said, with some of the stuff that I've been able to do, our students wouldn't have access to that hardware mm -hmm. or that type of technology without this benefit. Um, so we've got uh, the teacher grant program. I know it works with the alumni to, to, build, uh, to build funds to do that and drive things forward. Um, but one of the other topics, that, uh, things that comes to mind recently is um, the yearbook project. So how did, how did the, and I don't know if our viewers know, I'll let you kind of fill that in, but how did this yearbook project come to be? Uh, well, for anybody that doesn't know what that is, it, we, we uh, took 70 years of successes successes <laughs> easy for you to say uh, and and sev and some number of years to fill in the people who would have been uh, around then uh, uh, Wayne and Jackson uh, yearbooks but we sent them all to a uh, provider of this service <coughs> so uh, and and what we got back was was a digital uh, version of every one of those books and so that's cool in itself, but the way it's organized, <clears throat> actually, if, if anybody wants to see this who doesn't know about it, uh, it's a it's a HTTPS uh, alumni associate Union City Alumni dot org forward slash memories, and um, and and the so you can pick any year uh, of yearbook, and then you and then you can in a search box you can look for any body so in just a matter of minutes you could we just, in fact my sister and i just used it oh wait i can't tell that story never mind but it, <laughs> but it, but it involved <laughs> it, it's a surprise it, it involved though uh, we wanted to see her picture when she was in second grade say so we did the math subtracted you know 10 10 years from her graduation year Pick that yearbook, put in Kathy Corbin, boom. So, wow. it, so, it, and and the sports teams are there. It's all there, of course. And it's and so, it's primarily the high school yearbooks. Is that correct? Uh, no, it, yes, yeah. It was the the success this yearbook uh, was the main one for all those years. It was continuous, and and then the Wayne and Jackson ones were just selective for years that would have been relevant to. Yeah, you know, people who still who still care. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I found some yearbooks at home because I'm I'm living in the same house I grew up in, and there there were high school yearbooks around. I found found some and brought brought those in, and they got sent away and came back perfect condition. Um, yeah. And I know it, I, it's a, it's a great service. Now we I I do not remember how we found it. Uh, probably somebody just pitched it to us, I imagine. And uh, and but in any case, we we looked into it deeply. Uh, just because it felt like a great alumni service. 
when I talk to alumni now for any reason at all, I, I typically go there and, and you know, just look them up. I had a conversation with a, uh, with a, a woman who I knew was number, uh, number 32 on her basketball team <laughs> <laughs> back in the day. Oh, it's a good icebreaker. Sure. And so even just relationship building, it's good. Uh, we use it for uh, to find the class officers of classes so we can talk about the alumni banquets. Uh, the, the 50th especially, we want to get to the leaders of the class who can help organize uh, the reunion. Yeah, it's been a great thing. It's yeah, been a great thing. And I, it, it, it's, <laughs> as a teacher, you know, and that, that's, you know, here still, I, there's been days I walk into my classroom and I look over and I've got one of my students has got my picture from a yearbook pulled up and I'm like, what are you doing looking at my picture in a yearbook? Shouldn't you be working on computers? Um, but yeah, the kids, even, you know, current students are, are, are looking through it and find it interesting and it's, it's definitely a neat thing. Um, so, and I, you mentioned it, and we got, we've got the banquet coming up. The banquet <laughs> is, it's a big deal. Uh, so, and it's, I mean, I remember going to the banquet when I was, when I was a senior, and I've been since then, obviously, uh, for different things, but as a senior in high school, not really grasping why I was there. It's just, there's a bunch of alumni, and they want to honor us, and you, it's just something you do. Um, but I think it's grown to be a little bit more than that. Uh, so, tell us about <laughs> the banquet. I know that's kind of, the, that's the, uh, that's, um, you know, the Super Bowl for the Alumni Association. It seems like. It, 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 your uh, comment, though, is, is funny to me. I, I thought that the banquet I attended as a senior was the most boring <laughs> single, <laughs> single experience I'd ever had. I mean, I wasn't going to say that. But <laughs> well, it, it, now, we've tried. We engage the seniors now better than we uh, used to. There's some money they can make on a on a or just a drawing of so we try to make it more interesting than it might have been once but but still you know you're you're ready to get out and go and and uh and it's a bunch of what appear to be fair, fairly old people that are trying to hold your attention you know what it is though, if, if we could, if we get it right is that it is the it's their welcome to alum to being an alumni and what we what we really are trying to do now, and just the, all this communicate communication that we're doing, uh, and that goes to every age of alum alum that we have, from uh, including the new ones, but is really to, is is foster the idea of membership and and being an alum. Ten, 10 12 years ago, whenever we started, you actually there was a membership dues to be an alum. And, and at least theoretically, if you didn't pay your dues, you weren't a member of the Alumni Association. And I said to myself, that is counterintuitive about as much as it, it was five bucks. So, you know, and, and so somebody calls, they said, I've got a fairly good sized donation I'd like to give to the school, and, but I'm not a member. And I'd say, that's okay. Yeah, you're you're about you're to remember, be. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so we we got rid of that. We we've, we've uh, just the the idea of the universal alumni. If you're a graduate, if you're close to a graduate, if you if you left your junior year, say, and your but your identification as a, a young person is with Union City, they're in. Yeah. So we are not uh, selective, but but the idea is that if we can create a, a feeling of belonging. Uh, that that'll pay off in the long, if, if it doesn't pay off anywhere else, just the number of banquets that we have and all people will come back to. Uh, we have reasons to donate now that can be, that can be helpful, so. But I think it, it definitely it comes all around in the whole package, like you were saying before. I mean, you're, you're the, the, the Alumni Association is using its resources to help kind of come back around to help the school and so I think it's the the kids know that the Alumni Association is active and mm -hmm. because I know when I talk about you know this new piece of hardware this is something that the Alumni Association provided us and and you know that you know how what that means and what being a part mm -hmm. of that group can mean I think mm -hmm. it it's a good thing um, but so yeah, you've got your Alumni Association president hat but there and, and beyond the other hats that you wear as well but we've got there, there's something out there that we talk about the, called the foundation, and so tell me, tell me a little bit about what that is and how does that differ. And 
Yeah, th thank you for this opportunity there. Uh, the way the way this happened was was that when we it, as we as we accelerated our role as an alumni association, that's also saying that it will help the school with educational programming. Uh, in, in several respects of infrastructure, you run out of gas as an alumni association, and 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 the way we knew it for sure, I suspected it, but but we did the research of, um, with the Indiana Association of Profe uh, Public Education Foundations, NAPF, which we now are members of, <laughs> and and there's 47 guidelines for what a foundation should do if it's saying that it, it will uh, accept meaningfully sized donations. And we were already saying it, you know, back, uh, Jan had the foresight in 2013, I think, to establish a freestanding 501c3 for the Alumni Association. And so we were in fact saying that we will accept bequests and, and planned giving, sure. that kind of thing. And, and it, what well, we weren't pushing it, and so not too much happened, but enough happened that I, we started saying to ourselves, okay, we are kind of over our head here. You know, the, the, the plans or the procedures, accounting, all those things that go into uh, managing larger amounts of money are altogether different from pass-through pass donations that the Alumni Association receives you know, for our teacher grants and scholarships. And so, and so where that led naturally, uh, natu just led almost by lack of alternatives, was, was that we need to be a foundation. We need to have foundation cr uh, credentials, infrastructure, uh, and, and everything related to it. And, and interestingly, uh, that movement now it, is uh, active in small town Indiana. Okay. Uh, Aaron came, Aaron, Superintendent Black came to me uh, after he was in the down Indianapolis uh, conference. He said, I had the fun of putting my hand up when the speaker at this uh, meeting said, how many of you have a foundation? And he said, not very many did. But the reason for that meeting was that they were, they were, gonna rec they were recommending that a small town think about act activating a foundation uh, for these reasons, you know, and, and and with the pressure that's on school budgets, and 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 it probably uh, there's no sign it'll let up. The, sure. The the need for uh, financial help sometimes on technology, that kind of thing. Uh, so anyway, so so we were in front of the parade to some extent, but it's really moving now, and it is because to, if if you're a foundation. And if you follow in a past 47 rules, then you're gonna be really ready to do it, right? If an attorney calls and says, I'm representing a, a client and they're interested in donating, do you have boom, 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 boom? As far as a, the um, a due diligence action, you say yes. So it was the right thing to do. It opens doors too that I didn't uh, anticipate, but, but at least, we, we are now able, as a as the as the um, alumni or as a foundation, to apply for grants. So so we have another fundraising possibility. We haven't really activated it yet, but it just puts the whole thing in a different uh, different category. And we were able. This surprised me. I th I thought what would happen would be there'd be some convoluted. Uh, number of steps we'd have to take, and we'd done it. I wasn't sure what we'd do with the alumni associations, 501c3, and so so it, it it looked potentially daunting to get this done. It turns out that the uh, state of all we have to do is is convince the state of Indiana that our purpose is still 501c3ish, if uh, and in our case. It, Clearly was, but and and more activity uh, that would be donor-based activity, and uh, you can change your name. So where we are okay. now officially. So again, I'm glad you asked this because it it clears up. We, we, in a hundred years, we wouldn't have dropped the alumni association name. I mean, that's that's the heart of everything we do is our relationship with alumni, 
uh, the energy of our alumni and that we can provide through what we do is the is is the heart of our activity. So to have said, okay, the alumni association is now the foundation would have been the kind of decision I made in some of my not so <laughs> successful business. I'm stupid because we want that brand, we want what it does. So anyway, where we are now is, is simply that the 501c3 is the foundation. It can have more or less as side infrastructure. I mean, it, uh, it, the alumni association's involved in it, obviously, but it can do its in a path 47 things, and we can leave the activity of the alumni association exactly like it was, and it, be, it becomes legally a standing committee of the foundation. Okay. But we don't promote that. We don't, uh, we, we say in, in alumni association uh, uh, mailings that we, that we now have foundation status and that if then we are ready, uh, way, but in a way we said that before, that we're a lot more ready than we were to talk to people about what that means. So the alumni association rolls on. You know, just I don't. I I would guess there isn't a person in our whole sphere that has seen anything but increased energy and activity from the alumni association, and we've established the correct foundation for the larger opportunities that might be ahead. I'm sure that was a that was, was that? That, that's a lot. <laughs> It's a lot, yeah. It and uh, and it took two years or so to get it done. Uh, it, it's we're we're upheaving some well status quo, and, and of course there's always some well, resistance. Well, there's change. But, but yeah, it's change. Yeah. But I think where we are now uh, is is good, and where we where we will be in the years ahead with this ability to to. Um, uh, be involved in more meaningful uh, size uh, donations will be enormous for the school. See, one of my one of my deals is just that that the that when when you look we're, we're in Carmel, in Indiana, and and relatively speaking, I don't mean this unkindly about Carmel at all. It's been a great place to grow up or to uh, uh, build a business, but it's a wash in money. And, I mean, it it has money. But, and and, and if it didn't, it, yeah. if it didn't have money, it'd go down for something like the school. It go to, it could go down Meridian Corridor, and get money. Mm -hmm. So so and what we face in Union City is is another kind of challenge. But it but but we don't have lots and lots of money. So the foundation idea that we can help through time to to uh, endow or put you know, to put what amounts to money in the sock not only for scholarships which will continue of course uh, uh, but but also for for technology yet unseen I was talking to somebody once about what the, the technologies like 3d printing and mm -hmm. robotics and all that and and I said something like what 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 do you think the biggest of them is and he says, the biggest of them isn't yet that That's it's true. that we can't see it from here, and so the so the idea that that we can help our, our small school have financial resources to be competitive, not not fully of course, but but to be so our but our students can leave here just like I did and you did, can leave here and and know that they can play in the bigs with any student from anywhere is a good goal, and it's not a knockdown. You know, if that technology got out in front of us too far, then it could be, uh, uh, dis they'd, they'd be at a disadvantage. So anyway, that's, that's my vision, really, of the highest purpose of the foundation, is that, that things we can't see yet are what we are helping prepare for. Well, I, I can absolutely agree with that, and I see I've seen that. You know, I've been here for uh, like 
uh, 17 years now, and, and which feels like some days feels like yesterday, and some days it feels like a lot <laughs> longer. You know, but more, but most all, most of the time, it, it still feels like it uh, just recent. But it's been it, it's been overall, it's been fun. But I can definitely tell, you know, as I've worked in this world, that it, as technology starts, it moves faster, and it, that's the world I'm in. So it moves faster, and it changes education, it changes how it's delivered. I mean, you can't beat a teacher in a classroom. We've done a lot of virtual learning, but still face to face instruction. You can't you can't beat that. But it but the technology allows us to do a lot more. But as I've seen in my time, the teachers that let it get too far beyond them struggle, and they struggle to 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 bridge that gap. And it can get it can get insurmountable. And so the idea that you know we've got a we've got the foundation that's helping us helping us as a school not fall behind and maintain uh, the ability to reach out and grab those goals. And I know my students are are benefiting from that forward thinking in that mindset. Um, but yeah, I absolutely see that. Um, so yeah, I know uh, it's a great thing. Upcoming events, you said we said it earlier, we got the banquets coming. Oh yeah. I, it's, a, it's a big deal. Uh, um, yeah, of course it's always on Memorial Day weekend uh, and I made one attempt to move that <laughs> because I have, <laughs> I have the selfish fact that my wife's birthday always falls on Memorial Day weekend, of course, or usually, and this year it falls right on the banquet day. And she's not a graduate of Union City. I mean, we'll and get her so a cake if that's what boy, takes. Boy, But anyway, so I tried <laughs> once to move it, and there's so much tradition and, and good reason that it's, you know, is, was, and I think always will be on Memorial Day weekend, so that's a 28. Now what we've done too with the, with the banquet is uh, uh, we've got a great committee, uh, uh, in this case Luana Hollowell, who personally comes up with things for people to do on the weekend. So the, so the list of places that uh, uh, you can tour and, and, uh, and have more activity in Union City is, is on that list. The invitation we just sent out have co pretty well covers it. The, uh, but, but there's some interesting, the, the, of course those of us who remember the old West Side School Building mm -hmm. as a school are just blown away by what they did with it. Yeah, and absolutely. so that's a, that's a great tour. But uh, then also after the banquet, now we have the, it, uh, this year it's at the Pizza Hut, which has set aside a room that people can continue to mingle. and. Uh, and so that you know that's a post banquet opportunity. Uh, of course, uh, many of the of the classes get together on their own somewhere. So so, uh, uh, but if we can, we promote that. That's the thing I might even say here is that we, uh, using the website and other, uh, we, we have a uh, access to email, uh, quick email newsletters. We can help classes promote their activities. So just another example, we're trying to be as, as active as we can be in, in alumni relationship building. That's awesome. And I know that, that you know, I've been to quite a few banquets in the last couple of years, and they're definitely definitely getting better, and we're de more entertaining. And I know the you know, it's they sit close to the seniors. There's some of my students. We talk, and, it, and, we, and when there's slideshows, it's you know, it's, I'm like, that's the way it, that's the way it was. You know, <laughs> they're they're looking at stuff from. You know, we had a video <laughs> this last time of old floats and stuff, and I'm like, that's the way it used to be. I mean, that's before me, but still, it, it was neat stuff. Um, well, you know, we had the we had the unusual, hopefully never ever again situation of of missing a full banquet in 2020. Sure. And so what we did with that, and it worked, was to as much as we possibly could replicate the experience of the 50th class for both of them. So we had honored tables for the class of uh, 70 and 71. That was, that was pretty they, cool. They had uh, two speakers. You'd make a case that it might have got a little long, but uh, <laughs> but but everybody's going to have what, their. What their I time. you know what I figure on that though. This is what I decided about myself back then. I didn't have anything else to do. And it really, when you think about it, you're there in an experience that you really won't have uh, again. So just be patient and the speaker will finish <laughs> eventually and you'll be fine. So I, we didn't even apologize for the length of that one exactly. <laughs>
But anyway, it's uh, well. It's I know. A good event. Yeah. No. It, it absolutely is, and I know. Um, that you can find out more on, I know we, there's a Facebook page, Union City Alumni Association Incorporated, uh, is what I found earlier, and it had all the posts, and there's uh, unicityalumni.org, and that's where you'll where you're find your newsletters, upcoming events, uh, the link to the yearbook project. Yearbook link, yes. Um, but if there's somebody out there that wants to get involved and wants to become a member, what, you know, is, what should they do? You know, actually, Again, they are a member. Well, so, but but the great. involved question is a good question. We we, we uh, on the site we have a play. You know, just a the the main link is uh, help us. I think it is just the, the the link on the website, and it's got a form where people can indicate their interest and and uh, get in touch. So that's that's probably the easiest way. Uh, phone call is fine. Yeah, we we. Uh, See my phone numbers all over the website, <laughs> so so, uh, and we really like to. I, I'm in contact right now with a uh, member of the basketball team of 1954. Okay, and we're talking. Uh, they they were the the team that won the sectional in Union City for the first time since 1934, when my dad played. And so, but anyway, so, and, and I was there as a 10 year old when they won that. So I'm in this just great dialogue with a guy that, you know, to me was sort of a hero at the time, for sure, well, still is, they won. But anyway, so the whole, just this whole thing where we can interact and it, it, it really is fun just because the, you have the experiences, you have teachers in common, you have uh, funny stories in common. So anyway, we're, we welcome all inquiry. There's a that would, the website would be the best place to pass it on because you can tell stories there. Maybe, sure. That, yeah. Well, I know both of us have some things we need to do here <laughs> moving forward. I, I, it's, Bill, it's been an absolute pleasure to, to, to catch up. I know we've kind of gotten to know each other the last couple of years since we've worked together on some projects, but it, it's been fun to hear more and learn more about the Alumni Association. I hope that's uh, that uh, folks have been enlightened, so to speak, as, as to as what the Alumni Association is doing. And uh, UNC alum members, uh, if you would like to join, or, or not join, you're already a member, if you'd like to, to help out, we'd love to have your help. And if you come to the, to the banquet, um, all that information is uh, unitycityalumni.org or go to the Facebook, Facebook page, Union City Alumni Association Incorporated. I'm sure it'll be all over. Uh, I know there's lots of pictures on there about what the Alumni Association has been doing here in the school. Um, it's a neat thing, and I encourage everybody to get involved. Uh, Bill, again, thank you so much for your uh, time today. You. I appreciate Real it very much. Um, and that's it for Cable Chatter, and we'll, uh, we'll see you again next time.